should be low enough, right? Let's see how, uh... Oh, yeah, that should be fine. Um, hi. Hello, everyone. Uh, it's been a... It's been a while since I've had a D&D &D stream. I'm, I'm so excited. Uh, shit, okay. I need to put this fucking... Okay, what is... Hello? Okay, everything's freaking out for me. Here, uh, put that there. We're gonna shrink that bad boy down. Oops, wrong way. And then shrink it a little more. That'll do. Um, hello everyone. Hello. Uh, it's been a hot minute. Normally I would undeafen and everything to go ahead and get this show on a roll. But, frankly, uh, I got a couple things to explain first. Firstly, yes, I am starting a second D, D campaign. As some of you know, uh, recently I put Realm of Renovamen on a little hiatus. Um, I'm not quite sure of the status of Realm of Renovamen, if it will be back. But regardless, this campaign is completely new. Uh, this campaign is not linked to the Realm of Renovamen in any way at all. Um, it's completely different, and it is based off of kind of, based off of the, uh, the one verse. You, you might remember every Friday for a while, I used to do this thing where I'd get a, my, my friends together and we'd do a little one shot. Well, doing that actually quite taught me, uh, uh, several things. Mainly, uh, I hate doing one shots. Absolutely despise them. They might be fun to play in, sure. I mean, I get to have a no-consequences little character with fun that I don't need to remain consistent with, and I get to try new character builds and whatnot, but to DM them? You know, DMing them is just like I'm sitting here doing a one-shot with characters we might never see again. It just didn't have the same oomph. So, I took my Fridays and I said, you know what, we're gonna have another campaign, which is what this is. Now, I'm gonna unmute, but we're not gonna start yet. Hey, Irindel, uh, I'm, we're not starting quite yet, but I'm unmuting, uh, to say, uh, say hi to chat, because today, Hello. today is going to be one of four, um, solo sessions for this campaign to set everything up and to give everybody a little bit of, uh, backstory for everybody before they get stuck in the web, whatever that means. We're going to each... I'm going to be giving each and every single one of the, um, the characters a solo session. These could, these are gonna be very different from each other, and, um, we'll set up some stuff, you know, let us all get to know the characters a bit more. Uh, the, these are also partially designed by the, um, by the players, because of course, I mean, if you're gonna have a solo session where you set up things about your character, obviously you're gonna have to have the player to actually have some input. Um, and yeah, we'll be doing uh, we'll be doing one of these today, and then just just as a little uh, little Christmas Eve Eve gift, uh, we'll be doing another one tomorrow. But I I'm I'm yammering on uh, Irindal. So Hello. before we descend upon the tree that I've so graciously and beautifully drawn as the high class artist I am clearly not um would you like to would you like to describe what Irindal looks like of course of course so Irindal is a kind of dark blue furred tabaxi uh wearing these like 10 green uh, 10 green uh 10 robes um kind of adorned with uh darkish, more saturated, uh, desaturated blue markings. Uh, around his neck is a little glowing crystal on his, uh, let's say right paw, is a ring that glows as well, and his eyes are just so full of stars. Uh, alright. Other than that, did, did you, sorry, I, I was typing something. Did you say what class you'll be playing? So, uh, Irindal, if the star motif was not obvious, is going to be a circle of stars, Druid. Lovely, lovely. Uh, <coughs> read your journal for a second before I continue. Will do, boss. Just, just, just a quick little thing. Cause I don't think I ever got that. Um, hmm. I don't know. Up to you, boss. <laughs> up to you, bud. I don't mind. <laughs> well, all right then. Uh, two, 
establish what's been happening here. You, uh, many, many, uh, what would you say, years, months ago? Yes, maybe? yes, yes. Years. In a while. Many a year ago, you w had a vision in your sleep. As you slept under the stars, well, not really completely under the stars, but as you slept in the night, you had a vision. This vision to you was astral in nature, a starry sky above you with each of the stars glowing brighter and brighter. Normally, of course, stars do that. You would know that. But the stars continue to grow brighter in this vision, and they don't stop. You've had this vision maybe a few times afterwards with the speed these stars glow, getting faster and faster, until eventually, all that's left before you in this vision is a white void, left devoid of any life. No matter where you turn, where you look, physical matter does not live in whatever void is created by the stars glowing this bright, which you have determined is a foretelling of a drastic event. Of what? You're not entirely sure. You've spent these years dedicated to researching to try to figure out any prophecies of what it might be or how you might stop it. There was one particular thing you began to research and that was of an old legend of the web. The web is a strange legend. It was kind of, uh, it, it was, it's normally seen by others as a niche rabbit hole legend that you tell to your children, but to you, it was incredibly interesting and important. The web in this legend is a second material plane that was created after four adventurers whose names have been lost to history attempted to defy the gods and create a second material plane. They tried their might and did not succeed entirely, causing an event known as the Shattering in this legend. The Shattering is the event that these four heroes started, which shattered their material plane and, well, created the web, a version of the material plane spread across thousands of nodes and across a starry sky, and in its place was created a new material plane to replace it. Almost. And as you have gotten back from a neighboring town after researching, you've been holed up in your lair for probably what some would say would be many a year. Yes, you know, after seeing this vision, you've hold your, held yourself up within this tree. Sorry, could you repeat that? You've, you've probably been really isolated since, uh, since, you know, seeing this vision. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was once, you know, somewhat of a community that revolved around you. I mean, lived near you. Of course, you weren't their leader or anything, but you definitely were a part of the community. But ever since you had this vision and began to tell others of it, with years that had gone by, eventually everyone just kind of moved away. Of course, this was nothing to you. They would all thank you once you'd saved them, or... At least you hoped. Something about your tree, though, did unnerve them, was that as soon as you began talking and discussing about seeing this vision, strange flowers began to pop up around your tree. Every month that it had gone by that you'd seen this vision, strange lilies would pop up. As you'd look into them, they'd have a bluish-purple hue, and white little dots seemed to be mim seeming to be mimicking almost a starry night sky within their petals. Touching them, though, reveals that there's no such thing and that they are just strangely colored. Every month, another one's appeared, forming a ring around your tree. Its second ring has a couple of links missing. But as you return to your tree, after wandering to a neighboring town to read their books and notes in their library, you see another has popped up. Thinking on it, you realize it's been the... Well, you're not sure how many years it's been, but 
It's the month anniversary of you seeing this vision, and this lily has likely popped up while you were gone. And you see, it's been stepped on. Would you like I to guess b before proceeding, it's time to survey the area a bit. Irondale is going to see that this, this lily has been stepped on, and that shouldn't be a thing. So he wants to scan the area, both like physically and magically. So let's get some, I'm guessing, the Arcana checks going. So. Uh, I wouldn't say Arcana. I would say invest. Well, what are you trying to check magically? Are you trying to detect uh, presences or magical like? Forces. I guess the I guess the thing would be like um, any kind of runes or glyphs, or any like kind of dormant spells to be triggered, like an alarm maybe. Mm. Uh, all right, roll me. He's weary. Roll me an investigation for the physical check, but an arcana for the magical check. All right. Investigation solid. Oh, and arcana solid too. That is a 23 on investigation and a modded 20 for Arcana. All right. Uh, looking around the area physically, you know, before doing anything rash, you look around your fl uh, the other lilies that have sprouted to see if they've been stepped on, but nothing of the sort seems to be the case. It seems that whoever stepped on this lily didn't decide to step on the others as... Mm. Sorry. As... Uh, they wouldn't have stepped on this one. In fact, as you look at the ground leading up to your, uh, leading up to the hole within your tree lair, you see that this lily was specifically stepped on, almost as if to tell you it's been stepped on. There's a lack of footprints leading up to the, uh, you know, the grass hasn't been disturbed in these places, but there is a significant shoe print right on the flower that's been stepped on, which you notice doesn't seem to care that it's been stepped on. Just looks as if though it's been squished. It begins to, you see as its stem slowly almost snaps back into place. You've recognized this as attempts early on to cut the lilies ended up them regrowing in the same place. Um... Question, random ass question. Would do you think Irindol would have tried to eat the lilies? Mm. I mean probably once upon a time ago, yeah, but not recently. You also remember that these lilies are incredibly poisonous, so it might be this poisonous feature that's allowing them to survive. Vile little things for how pretty they are. Magically, uh though. I believe you said, you said in your little thingamabob, let me go read. You said in your thingamabob, your thingamaroo. Um, you know that you've put an alarm spell upon your uh, lair to see if it's, to, to, you know, just basic magical user home security you know how it is your alarm has not been tripped strangely there's clear evidence of someone having stomped on this flower but your alarm has not been tripped so either they aren't inside and they were just some dickhead who came and decided to step on this one flower in particular or well I mean, there's not really much else, actually. They really couldn't be inside. Your alarm hasn't been tripped. Um, Yorindal's just gonna kind of keep an ear and an eye out, make sure they're kind of on a high alert, and probably poke a head into the lair to see if there's anything significantly out of place. Uh, let me bring over another image. Uh, you kind of make your way down a couple steps. You have a little spiral staircase that enters a sort of, uh, let me see how this music works. Oh, beautiful. Uh, you peek your head into the, uh, down the staircase a bit. Your lair is very homey. You've got a nice dining table with an oven next to it. You know, various, well, not various, a singular plate sits at one chair. You've not had company in a while. Your bedroom is over in the corner. It's rooted walls formed around it by your magic to 
Give it a little more privacy than the rest of your home. Granted, it doesn't have a door, but again, not much company here in a while. But your place of most importance, your study where you've been keeping your notes for the past few years and researching everything, looks, and I'm going to use your investigation check from earlier, looks slightly off. Someone clearly has moved some things around. You notice a couple books in the wrong place in the bookshelf. You notice a couple of books even turn on their side, which you definitely didn't do. Your god, your bookshelves are far too full to just leave books on their side and not put them back up. Everything seems a tad out of place, but not as if someone's come to rob you, as if someone perused your collection while you were gone. Hmm. So things have just kind of been moved around. Mm -hmm. The desk is clear, but it doesn't look as if though someone came to rob you. Just stuff's been moved. Which, granted, uh, could be just a misremembrance, or even just, who knows, a straight person wandering into the wrong house. I mean, he does tend to get cluttered, but he's going to kind of root around his stuff, see if there's anything notable missing, any specific kind of notes or whatever. Uh, all right. Roll me another investigation check for me. Uh, that is a 16. Uh, you root around your, uh, bookshelves. And, you know, of course, you've researched many things over the years. Of course, you've gathered a few books that tell of a astral apocalypse, seemingly to figure out what it was in your vision. These books seem to be the ones that haven't been moved, haven't been touched. Clearly, whoever was looking in here wasn't very interested in anything on the astral apocalypse that you visioned. Of course, the astral apocalypse is said to be many things by different people. Some state it's the gods coming down to wipe the uh, material plane off of the face of the earth as they use the stars to batter the world with their own missiles of erasure. Some have stated it's a, well, a celestial invasion on the material plane come to wipe it clean so that a new heaven can be built. Some state it's, well, the material plane simply floating away having just drifted upward into the stars and the stars eventually colliding with the earth. Of course, lots of these are harebrained theories. You know, clearly these are conspiracy theorists or snake oil salesmen trying to sell the end of the world to people with coin. But nonetheless, they're interesting theories, some with more evidence to back them up than others that you've acquired over the years. Uh... Searching a bit more, you come to a bookshelf which is majorly consistent of your notes with the web. Lots of different recountings of the legends. Lots of these books aren't even books. They're scrolls that you've had to write down different people's recounting of the legend of the web. There's recountings from a one Gabe Titandale. There's recountings from a one uh, unidentified man. There's several of these that you have within your, uh, within your, your, <laughs> within your bookshelf. These are the texts most moved around. Some of the books that are within this shelf have been moved. Some of the scrolls have been left slightly open. Clearly, whoever was in here got very interested in whatever was within these scrolls and books. I guess probably want to take a look a little further inside, see if there's anything. Um You had in your bedroom maybe? Yeah, see if there's anything there. You walk around your desk and walk into your bedroom. Now of course, being a druid, you know your plants. Your several bulbs that emit a bioluminescence uh, hang from the ceiling. But as you're walking toward your bedroom, 
you see over in the far corner, one of them is dimming. Do you do anything about this? Probably wants to take a look. You walk over to the corner in which your bulb is dimming. Seemingly it's getting old. This one's been in service to you for quite a while. It clearly is just aging and going old. But it does look to be withering. Where the rest of the bulbs, you know, might be old and reaching their prime, this one seems to be beginning its death. It's withering out to where eventually its light will disappear. In fact, as you look around the room even further, you're seeing that lots of them are starting to wither and rot very slowly. Is there any kind of obvious sign as to why? Not really. They just seem to all be beginning to wither. Uh, make me a arcana check, Hardimoji. Damn, I'm so good at fucking checks today. Um, the 23 again. You sense a strong presence behind one of the bookshelves up against the wall. Before everything in your lair goes black. Seemingly oh. every single one of your bulbs all burst at once. You can hear throughout the room the small bioluminescent uh, features of the plants or of the bulbs within them go and all throughout the room this crackling of your plants popping violently occurs. Your lair is completely dark. Do you have dark vision? Um, I mean, yes, I do. Uh, being a I would, uh, I would like, uh, can I like dim it? Hold on, I wanted to like dim. It. Oh wait, do Tabaxi's not get dark vision? So I just oh, do they not? Up? Do they not? Hold, on, hold on. Do I? Do, am I just making this up? I mean, do it would make it would make sense. It would make sense, but it's not on my sheet, so I forgot to put it on my hold sheet. Hold on, I'm gonna look it up, boss. Uh, yeah, they are. I just didn't edit to my sheet. Oh, okay. They do. They do have dark vision. They uh, do. Let me see if I can. I'm gonna like try to dim the uh, dim the thing. Can I dim it? Hold on. Um. No, I don't want a chroma key. Color correction? No. Okay. Whatever. I was gonna try to like dim it for dramatic effect. Uh, throughout the room, all of the bulbs seem to have withered and shriveled almost immediately. Whatever was behind the bookshelf has not stepped out, but it seems to think you can't see, or is at least trying to see if you can't see. Uh, you're known to kind of approach this presence slowly, as uh, you, stealthily, as try you, to not... As you begin to creep over toward the bookcase where you felt this presence in the room, your heart beats faster. No one's ever really taken an interest in you before like this. No one's ever broken into your home or especially read anything on the web. This is very different. You've definitely had your fair share of altercations with nature. You know, sometimes nature tries to eat, but everything here is just nothing seems right to you as you walk up to the bookshelf. Do you reach out? Do you do anything? Uh, probably wants to try a look at, uh, try to get a peek first before whatever, trying to touch it. Whatever this presence is might as well be within the wall as through the little cracks. And I, I assume your bookshelf probably has a back, right? Like, it's not one of those weird ones where they don't have, like, a back to it. Oh, yeah, shit. It, w it would have a solid back to it. Looking around the sides, you can't even get a glimmer of anything. Whatever this is, might as well be within a wall. I guess... Arendelle's probably going to 
approach the wall, maybe try, like, tap on it or something? As you reach a hand out to the wall, you almost freeze up for a moment as a red, scaly hand quickly shoots out of the wall and grabs your hand. Not in a aggressive way, mind you. It grabs it into a handshake. And as this hand begins shaking yours, some weird man steps out of the wall. He's a red dragonborn dressed in this weird... Well, you think it's weird. I mean, you have a caught up with the latest fashion, but it's a very stylish uh, uniform with these almost crosses uh, patterned onto his chest with a red and white uh, color scheme on this almost puffer vest that he's got on. He's wearing these leather pants with black shoes on them, and he steps out from the wall, and you can see a violin upon his back, and he shakes your hand and says, Great to meet you, Gabe Titantale. How are you doing? Uh, y you've got a nice, uh, place here. Do you not? It... It fits its purpose, but... That it begs does, it does. Why. Good place for a person to sit down and research and... squirrel away the years with a vision not yet seen by others. I, I would assume that's what you're doing. You don't see many druids go hide away in the vetra they claim to serve, but I'm no expert. I have things I need to tend to that are of course quite you do. Of than course you do. Sorry, I didn't quite introduce myself. Uh, he shakes your hand again. He has not let go since he reached his hand out and grabbed yours. Gabe Titandale once more. Uh, apologies about hiding in your wall. I wasn't sure if you were... Uh, crazed murderer, so I just had to take my chances. I... I don't have any plans to murder anyone in my world such as that. I just also have questions as to your presence and intentions. Do you look into his eyes at any point during this? Uh, most likely. His eyes are as black as the midnight sky. There's no pupils in those bitches. Uh, his horns uh, kind of curve back, and you see they curve in such a way to... They, they curve like a ram's horn, almost, uh, as they curve back, but they end just enough to make the shape of a half moon. It's a weird little shape their horns take. Uh, but Gabe, you know, walks around your... Uh, your place. You know, he kind of ignores the fact that you're asking him what he's doing here. He walks up let me get a, let me get a little, little thing here. Let me get a little, little token for him. Just a moment. I didn't type the fucking... Uh, he, he walks around you as you question his intentions and walk... He walks up to the, um, to the bookshelf where all of the web, uh, readings are. You, uh, talked to me once before. Did you not? I don't recall any such communication. History check for me, please, Hardy Moji. Sorry, I need to stop saying that. Yes, no history with love. Okay. Um. <laughs> uh. Histoire, 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 histoire. Uh, eight. You. You. Yeah, you don't remember talking to this guy. Oh, come on. We met, uh, at that one tavern. What was it called? The. The drinking drunk? People aren't very good at naming these sorts of things, are they? No, no, they are not. They are not. They are not. Uh, you asked me about this, uh, web legend. You really, really wanted to know if I knew anything. Traveling bard. Plays violin for a living. Come on, I mean, surely something's gonna spark your memory here. I don't recall. Do you want to make me that history check again, Hamuji? With advantage? Yeah, I would love to. Because he's told you stuff. That's and... more like it. 18. You actually do remember this guy now, now that he's mentioned Whoa. a couple things. Uh, you remember talking to him at this tavern. You know, you weren't there to drink, obviously. You were there to gain information. And seeing as he was a traveling bard, clearly he'd know something. You remember talking to him for a long time, how he seemed to know 
quite a bit about the legend of the web, almost as if he wrote a uh, interpretation of it himself. Oh, he did. You remember, you've got a scroll of his interpretation of the legend sitting right on that bookshelf he's looking in. In fact, he's got it in his hands. Yes, I, you just, you struck me as interesting, you know. You were really interested in such a niche little rabbit hole that I didn't quite think anyone would really give a shit about. So, I kind of followed you home and hid in your wall. I hope that's not too much of a hindrance. I've met worse than you. I will meet worse than you. I... Wow, you speak in more riddles than I do. Well... Look, Arendelle, I may know a little more than I'm letting on. When you talked to me, it was, well, a bit confronting, if you will. Lots of things going on, and just secrets I can't quite give. So, I wanted to make you an offer. Name your price. It's not a price, really. No, no. I'm giving you a chance for some hands-on experience. I'm going to require more specifics than your. Hmm. Yes. All right. Words. Uh, he begins to look through the books uh, and notes that you've made. Well, you see, there's a reason why I had such a collected version of my recounting of the web. He begins to flip through these pages, scoffing at each one, uh, you know, just flipping through until he gets to a page and points it towards you. You mentioned this. He opens to a page labeled The Blood Sun. This is a page that commonly, well, actually, pfft, scratch that. This is a page in this book which struck you as odd when you first read it. In not many other interpretations of the web in legend or anything, had you seen anything like this creation, which is why you ended up taking this book home. The Blood Sun is labeled to be the entire light of this cursed material plane. Essentially, what's said in the legend is that this Blood Sun is a cursed sun that lights up the land. It's how every single area gets its light in the web, and it's created out of the blood spilled every time the web resets. Resets is a term often spoken throughout the web's legend, but none of the other ones are very specific on what it is, but it's said to be particularly harrowing, as in this interpretation, blood is seemingly created from it and turned into a massive ball of light in order to set the web alight. You see, this is just about all that's accurate about the web. There's been many, many interpretations. Some call the adventuring party who committed to the Shattering a group of seven, four, eight, ten. Some call them two. Some say the web is a glistening glow upon the sky, how the stars are created just right above us, but I know that's not true. And I know how to get you there. You claim to have the knowledge on how to get myself there, but have you the knowledge of a more 
permanent opening. <laughs> Many have tried to find such a thing. Many established wizards, the great sorcerer king himself, the even to the lowest mages wanting to acquire a standing. But truth be told, the web is a cursed place. And the web doesn't exactly open itself to visitors. So, to answer your question, no, no, there is no permanent opening that I can do. It must be manually done. How exactly is it done? Well, I will only tell you such a thing if you wish to truly accept this. I and keep I'll my accept your terms on I keep my secrets one condition. Oh that be if you can provide well, if I oblige and I take your deal and experience this web for you firsthand. Provided it is a stable plane I that can did house people. Say it's cursed. Well Curses can always be alleviated with enough time and patience. Whatever helps you I... sleep at night. Well, should we enter the plane, survive, and... Hell, even find a... safe space in there? Maybe I assure you... To open the door to us, Tom? I assure you, most of the web is safe for human inhabitation. In fact, it's rather inhabited already. I mean, you didn't think the people who were in the original material plane just went and poofed out of existence. And he holds up the page labeled the Blood Sun again. What do you think this is made out of? I suppose that adds up. I wish to study this place, to see if it may provide a new, more permanent home for my people. You see, as soon as you say this, he begins to take his violin off his back, place his chin upon it. You see, he has to angle it kind of weird, because he has a little, you know, dragon horse. They have a little spike on their chin. He doesn't want to stab his violin. He's got to angle it a little weird. But eventually, he does bring the bow to the violin, and speaks once more. Now understand that doing this for you will require something. I'm not going to do this for free. When you get back, I want to hear everything. Most whom enter find solace in a consequence-free life of infinite resets and don't end up coming back. But I figured you, someone who's seen this vision and wanted to alleviate the world of its burden, you would be one to return, no? I'm, I'm a note taker by heart. Anything I can learn about this place? Once I am able to return, I have no qualms sharing with you. Good, because I'd love to hear everything. He snaps his fingers with his free hand, and I need you to make me a wisdom save. Oh, dicey roll. Actually, every roll is a dicey roll. <laughs> um... With Savior, 16. You're just three under. I'm so sorry. Ah, just three under. You're okay. under the effect of hold person, but it's not as if, though, this would matter much. 
as the bow strings along and a beautiful melody of violin begins to sprawl through your ears Gabe walks closer to you and begins to sing but as soon as the first word leaves his lips it's just pure agony Every word cuts into your very soul as he sings every word, every single small syllable of whatever cursed thing this is cuts into you. Chip, chop, chop. Every bit of your soul feels as if it's being rended by this process, and you realize as you only begin to feel this, he's only said one word. And then he says another, he sings another, continues to sing many, many words. God, when does it end? Until finally, he strings along the last bow and you can feel yourself swirling in your space. Everything around you is beginning to melt away, morphing into just nothingness. All that remains there is Gabe, who stands firmly in place as he walks up to you, and the final thing you hear before anything else is him walking up to you as your vision begins to blur and your ears begin to ring is let's hope you have fun in there. And you faint. Everything around you is gone. Nothing is left. But you can still hear this strange whooshing sound as you are sent spiraling throughout the web. What you think might be the web. Every bone in your body feels as if, though, it's just continuing to rotate in place. You're being tossed, turned, like you're having a nightmare. Until finally, after a few short moments, or hell, could have been days, and no, we're not ending session here, you wake up in a log cabin? The outside looks to be that of a forest stretching thousands of miles, and, and the hearth and the fire is burning brightly. The bearskin rug on the ground is a not a great sight for a druid, but you understand some people have less than favorable uh, decoration. Everything around you looks to be be almost completely normal, except for the notes just above the hearth. Several scrawlings have been written throughout on these various pieces of paper, some lay scattered across the floor, charred a bit by being somewhat dipped into the hearth a bit. And around you, you notice that the place is almost dotted with these notes everywhere on the walls, on the ceiling. Several notes have been written. And behind you, if you were to turn around, you will see a map. What do you look at first, if anything? Um, your intel probably wants to flick through the notes around the place. Several of the notes have very distressing writings on them, such as this place makes you forget this place makes you forget don't forget, this is where you end up, this is where you end up, or things such as do not go into any nodes near the shrieking bulb, it doesn't end the sound doesn't end, it continues to yell, what did it do why does it screech and there are some, actually, what you hope to be helpful notes. 
such as a much calmer, calmly written, a much, a much more calmer written, the notes around the burning cluster are on fire, constantly. You'll have to weave through if you want to get anywhere past it. And another note that catches your special attention and catches a mighty glimmer in your eye. A note written in blood, seemingly, that says, Don't trust the webbed man. Don't trust Gabe Titandale. Well, that's fun. Uh, let me check my image real quick. Mm-hmm. Um, so, because it makes sense for the character, and I didn't actually have it on my sheet, can I spawn a book and quill? So true, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, sweet. Um, uh, if you want to keep looking through the notes, I will say there's more. I could go all night. Wink. <laughs> um, I mean, frickin' Arendelle is probably going to just write the contents of all of these down, so keep them coming, you know? As you look throughout more of the notes, you see some of them almost looking to be nice advice for those stuck here. If you head to nodes near the cluster forest of nodes, there's rather delightful forests, oasises, nature-filled places. Though, don't travel too deep cluster or the trees will attack you you're not sure what that could mean uh you see however a interesting collection of notes seemingly written by the same man i am traveler of the web there need not be any question to my identity as likely many of the people who've written these past notes are dead you came here alone or with a group of friends who heard a strange verse that cut into your soul. I will be assisting you in, well, my findings, what happens, and how you can survive. There's no escape. Sorry. Don't want to spoil that. Uh, there are four clusters in the main edges of the nodes. These clusters are what we like to call as a certain phenomena within the the web. Uh, they never shift. You notice that and wonder what they mean by that. And they're constant. They're an almost anomaly within the web. This cluster always remains the same, never changing, and you can always head there if you need a sense of familiarity. Uh, ranking them from dangerous to least dangerous. Uh, least dangerous would be the forest of nodes. This node is a dense forest where you might be able to camp out, but it has all the dangers of a regular forest. Dangerous, as in, uh, Sabertooth Tiger bit me there once before a reset. It was not pleasant. Um, the Cluster of Lacketh is a interesting one. It's called this because it is mainly inhabited by many Githyanki citizens who all very vehemently worship their god Queen Vlacketh, who doesn't seem to exist. I haven't actually been able to figure it out, as they mostly stab you if you go too close, but if you're respectful and maybe say praise Vlacketh a couple times, you might be able to get around. Um, the Shrieking Bulb is not a cluster, but still sort of counts. It is a lair. Do not go near it. Do not piss off what's inside. And finally, the burning cluster. Everything's on fire. Do not go here. It sucks. Also, don't walk into the blood, son. You will evaporate. I've had it happen a couple times before, but... Well, do it enough times and let's just say you won't come back. Uh, Well, uh, advice. Walking out the door, uh, you see these notes are to the right of the door. There is a door here. You can leave, weirdly, but the note says, To the right uh, is a door, and exiting this door is going to spit you out in a random direction. You should be able to figure out which by using a copy of the map, Uh, which you see, looking over to the map, you see a small table with seemingly just one copy of the map on it. You're not sure what he means by your map. Um... You'll be able to see where you are, as whenever you open the map, you'll know directly which node you're on top of, which is very helpful. You're welcome for that, by the way. Um, 
To exit a node, simply jump off the edge. It sounds weird, I know, but you'll get used to it. Uh, finally, unfortunately, there is no escape. There's only survival, and this place is where you'll end up if you die. Which, yes, can happen multiple times. It's unclear whether or not how many times something can affect someone. One person might die two times and not come back. Some might die a hundred and not come back. We call these people the Everlasters. These people are mad and insane. They have figured out how to avoid coming back to the hearth after a reset. If they've integrated themselves into a node, they almost become a node denizen and don't reset. You are a web traveler. You will come back here after every reset. Be careful, though, as, you know, going insane does cause you to become a node denizen. Speaking of, don't tell no denizens they are no denizens they usually have an adverse reaction to that that's all ta-ta now please don't walk into the blood sun though for real it's an ocean of blood and it burns i see many other notes seem to be that of insanity many of the notes like you read previous speaking about how the shrieking bulb doesn't stop shrieking and how they heard it for hours. The burning cluster. Some of them, though, instead of being people who've gone absolutely nuts, seem to be more curious. Seemingly you find stacks of notes that seem to be logs, almost. Day one, um, I've attempted to head over to the burning cluster, but as many of the other notes state on the wall, it is indeed on fire. Um, not sure what I expected, really. I'm surprised I could even get there within time. I came across a town of delightful people who helped me get there. I watched them all burn to death. And then I burned to death, and now I'm back here. I will write more on my findings. And you see, below that, day three. So, I really should learn to trust these notes more, as they are not lying. The Shrieking Bulb does emit a horrible wail. Something in there is very sad about something, which, to be honest, in here is probably fair enough. I did have an encounter with someone as I was leaving. A man in a purple suit. He said he could get me out of here. And then he told me his name. Only... I couldn't hear it. I know he said it, but... That was strange enough for me to leave. Uh, and you see these continue on with various little notes. You know, it ends up becoming like a diary, and you... Realize there's not much else to gain about the web. It's just this person surviving until eventually... The last note simply says... I'm just going to walk into the sun until I go home. You want to do anything else within the heart? Uh, I guess kind of notes are all surveyed. What else was there to take a look at? The map. The map. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. He's gonna he's gonna like take a copy down of the notes and then uh go to the map walk up to the map and see a very wide stretched web, several circles indicating something, but you see as well a copy of the map laying under it, and you see on the map five, sorry, six major locations. A small brown diamond in the middle with the words, the hearth, written above them, seemingly in red to indicate that this place is far different than the others, just north to the to the, um, just north to the hearth, you see a big red circle. The blood... I am so sorry. I will be back in a couple minutes. You see what's on the stream. You see several of these things. There's no notes written around them. That's what I was trying to get at. Do you want to keep my stream entertained? Do you want me to just put it on the... Oh, wait, no, I don't have a cleaning screen. Never mind. Say anything if you want. Uh, I'll be back. Well, chat. We sure are in a predicament now. Gone are the comforts of my 
wonderful uh, sheltered tree home. And now we find ourselves in a strange, bizarre place. It's unlike what you'd expect from the places described in legend. The second material plane you would think would be much more akin to a world such as our own, but this place surely, surely seems to be far different than that. Its denizens maddened, driven to the point of self-inflicted death seems to be concerning at the very least. It's going to be an interesting journey throughout this place, figuring out exactly what there is here. Whether it will be a suitable escape from what is to come is only for time to tell. At the very least, I will be safe. And if the worst comes, calamity strikes, and I'm the only one who could make it to safety, then I will share their stories and make sure time does not forget them. Chat, I run out of monologue material. This is messed up. Messed up. Wiener! Thank you, Panda Alex, for your amazing cameo. <laughs> Amazing. This verse really do be one. Hi, Chan. Panda. Oh, hi, Panda. The what? I said hi, Panda. Hi, it's me, Panda. I'm here to <laughs> be a co-commentator until zombies back. <laughs> hi, how's everyone doing? So. Yeah. You're a cat. <laughs> meow, meow. Meow, meow. Meow, 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 meow. Meow, 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 meow. meow. So, give me your theories. On what? Um, <laughs> this zombie used both its gay to say plot point. <laughs> Gith Yankee. Anyway. <laughs> Gith Yankee. Gith Yankee. Although, like I said, there's just basic D&D thing beer to you. Yo, do you reckon we're gonna get a stone that sends us back to the hearth? A hearthstone? <laughs> I, I knew what you were gonna say, but I wasn't ready. 
<laughs> you do you do realize that it's actually just what a hearthstone. Oh yeah, I know. It's because a yeah, hearth yeah, is like yeah. a fireplace, and then you use a hearthstone to bring around. I'm pretty sure. What was it from? I think it was from like World of Warcraft. Not, yeah, they are in World of Warcraft. Yeah. Yeah. It might have been like fucking some like old ass like the witch at no, I'm joking. Um. Oh, I just realized. I think zombie painted the white dots after the purple. Because I swear there's a white dot that clips over one of the purple dots. Is it the two that are really close near the blood sun? No, it's um to the left of the blood sun and down a slight bit. The large one looks like it clips over a purple dot. Yeah, but then you see a bunch of white dots that look like they're under the the. True. The dots. Hmm. Who knows? Anyway, the blood sun. Was there? This also like is there just a black hole in the top right? Uh, I think so. I don't know. Is this a sound gun reference? Black holes. <laughs> yeah. Oh boy, the shrieking bulb. Let's hope no characters are like very perceptive with their ears or something, or very sensitive with their ears. <laughs> Hmm. Why did somebody do that? <laughs> Why did he make the half a diamond and then not center the circle in it? <laughs> uh, I don't know. That's my little token. Ah, amazing. Yeah, you didn't do a doodle, so I was like, fuck, I just to make a little starry coin thing. I'm just gonna, like, decapitate my, draw my drawing, and so I just have the head. Was that the... Cluster from Steven Universe? Whoa! My diamond. So close to hitting the fucking incorrect button right now. My di- Black diamond. <laughs> that was in the end oh, That was a baseball. Oh, that's a baseball. So, can I get a live update on how's Ar how's Arendelle feeling? Um, bewildered, but not really scared. Mm-hmm. Tell me more on that. Not yet. So, Arendelle's kind of just like, holy shit, this place I've been studying that is a legend that might not be real is real. That's great. Mm -hmm. The issue is now, I need to get all my fucking people here and see if it's going to be safe. What people? Arendelle's people. And who are Arendelle's people? Or is that something we'll have to find out next time? I on... say for me to know and for you to find out. <laughs> yeah. So you got to watch the stream chat. Be ready to learn. You'll learn other funny things. I still haven't done that thing zombie asked about giving a quest. <laughs> I completely forgot. Have you got a, one of those quest things? Uh, if I do, I've not read it, so. Oh no, as in, which I think we're supposed to tell zombie about it. Oh, like 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 a, like a, the personal quest. For the yeah. Game. Yeah, I was. I mine's down already. <laughs> <laughs> My ass, I forgot. <laughs> hmm. Well, am I more prepared than me? Well, mine was pretty simple, so... Mm -hmm. Like, mine's not super difficult. Are you allowed to say what it is? <laughs> um... Slenderman in the eight pages. Whoa, holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> Slenderman appears. Is Sl Slenderman in the web? <laughs> Who knows? We'll have to find out next time on The One Verse. Actually, not the One time. Verse. And, like, th four more times later in The One Verse. <laughs> Mm, yeah. Well, if they're streamed. Chat, you may never know if the one if the Slender Man is canon in the one verse. <laughs> oh shit, we gotta go bald. Ah! Christmas turkey. Watch this cookie cutter trick. 
Why does that man have a jug of butter? <laughs> I'm just gonna start commentating on the random TikToks I fucking find while in this VC until zombie gets back. <laughs> Interesting. That is not an umbrella. Ed Sheeran? That is not who I'd think that would be about. I... Out of everyone... You know those, like, posts where it's like... Canceling someone because they said something ten years ago is stupid, whatever. Mm, uh, Eddie, yeah. The, the Ed Sheeran. <laughs> is, I didn't think they'd be defending Ed Sheeran of all people, because apparently he said some. Is is Ed Sheeran getting cancelled? I think they should cancel him for um, making his song. Copyrighted, making streamers not able to finish the Pokemon with the sound on. Which was kind of funny though, but also. It was, yeah. Uh, Remember that whole thing of like, you're gonna stream Scarlet and Violet, you have to mute the credits. <laughs> yeah. So ridiculous. And just imagine, like, fucking. <laughs> it's like, oh fuck, I got DMC ad, what did I get? Pokemon? <laughs> I didn't have any music on! What would you do if Ed Sheeran came up to you and said, You're Celestial! Celestial! I'll listen to that song now. I think it's actually quite- I think it's a good song. You know? Yeah, it's a pretty decent song. I'm putting on by Spotify now. I'm so Want a break from the ads? I got- I got a- three months of YouTube premium for free as part of Discord Nitro. Yo! That's one that uses I... YouTube a lot. Do I have it? I just have an ad blocker. Um... I have YouTube premium for three months, so... Uh... Hmm. When's the 5th of March? Hey, when your thing... I oh, know. When does your thing... When does yours run out, then? Uh, in like three months' time. What day of the month? I don't know. Okay. I <laughs> say it, because it apparently stops in 5th of March, then my one, so I could just give you mine. <laughs> Maybe. Ugh, they gave an AI, an AI pass. That's, uh... Yeah. Cringe. It's like when I was doing the Spotify Wrapped, and Spotify Wrapped was like, Oh, um, look at this. AI DJ- no. No! Look at this thing. Isn't it neat? No. Wouldn't you say my collection's complete? Yo, that's a cool 3D porn. Hey, who wants to hear what it's like in a wind tunnel? <laughs> I don't know why, but that's become one of my favorite stupid bits. <laughs> Of like, um, what was it? Well, there was like an era of like freaking um gamer movies, if you get what I mean. No, you know those like movies where it always like it was like these uh it was like when game for gaming became more popular, or whatever, and then like. People who maybe had like grew up with like Super Mario and Donkey Kong on the NES uh, found out it was popular and so made movies of it like uh, Pixels and everything where I oh, tried to yeah. and like Ready Player One where they're like gamers are so cool look at this we're gaming why was well that was an arc so I don't know. It it's intriguing to say at least Why? 
if they how do they what? I watched someone just cut a like a toasty in the most sacrilegious way possible. So take a square. Take the top left corner. Yes. Cut it diagonally from around the midpoint at the top to the midpoint on the left. So you've just basically got like a square with a corner cut off. Now do the same with the top right corner. So it's kind of like a pentagon. Interesting. That's how they cut it. And they just left it and presented it like it was if it was the greatest so thing. Like a house. Like a house. Like a house. Like a house. The house of Holbein. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hey, chat, do you want to know a fun catering tip? Use scissors more. True. I've mm heard -hmm. that. Yeah. But I was like, oh, scissors or whatever. Like, no. Cut your pizza with scissors. Cut your how spring you... onions with scissors. How, how do you play uh, 20 questions again? Do play 20 questions? Actually, no, no, not 20 questions. No Google. Do you play the alphabet game? I thought you were going to say, like, I spy. <laughs> like, um... Okay, I spy something beginning with a uh, purple circle. Uh, is that a purple circle? Um, no. Wrong. Uh, I see something see. beginning with a... Uh... The hearth? The blood moon! Ah! <laughs> That's the fucking blood the sun. <laughs> fucking zombies are in like, no guys, it's not the blood moon Terraria reference, it's the blood sun. Eyes on that. Hey, hey, get the, get the fuck, you, 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 you <laughs> the fuck. Wait, no, I didn't. <laughs> Amazing. Hold on. I feel bad. I was just trying to. <laughs> uh, okay, where were we? Uh, you were looking at the map. Um, you see several locations marked on the map. You know, various different areas upon it. Um, these areas you remember seeing mentioned in the various notes, and a copy of it is rolled up on the t on a little table beneath it, lays before you. Let's take a look at this. Opening it, it is almost a exact copy of um, of the map just above you. And as you look down at this map, and you look back up at the one right above you, you look back down on the table, and there's another copy laying there. It's like infinite maps. <laughs> infinite maps. Hmm. Do you want to roll me Arcana hmm. to see why, maybe? Hard much yeah, hard. sure. Uh, 19. So, as you look at the map before you, trying to sense if this is some kind of weird, maybe, illusion that shows you the map. No, the map is indeed physical, and the map on the table is also physical. It seems what's happening here is the table is creating the maps. Oh, you played a dangerous game here, zombie. I. What is Arendal? Oh no! <laughs> no! No! Oh, no! 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 Is no! Going to start smacking the infinite maps off the table. Um, you smack one map off, and as you watch, as it slides off the table and onto the floor, as it hits the floor, you look back over on the table, and indeed, there's another map there. You smack it again, it slides across, falls off. You notice that the map you smacked off for the first time isn't on the floor. And as you look back, there's another map. The map you have in your hand is still in your hand. But you give this one a good old bap this time and smack it, flies off the table, smacks into one of the windows. Not breaking it, of course. You look back, another map on the table. You look over map's not on the floor. Seemingly, the only time when a copy of this map is physical is when someone takes it and has it in their hand or on their person. Do you keep smacking them anyway? 
Yeah. Delightful. You smack a, uh, a couple of more, uh, you know, maps off. You know, every, every good researcher needs to have a little recreation, you know, have a little fun on their experiments. You keep smacking them a couple off the uh, table. When do you give up? Uh, probably about, like, five minutes into it. Yeah, five minutes in, the, the, the bit's starting to get a little old. The maps are getting a little too infinite. Uh, and you, you stop, and all that's left around the room is what's left. And the notes seem to have been moved by the map, and you now have a copy of the map of the web. I'm guessing it just appears as it does on stream. Yeah, it does. It's it's yeah. like how it is on stream, labels and all. Why is it when I speak this weird purple cat picture in the corner lights up? Oh, that's so crazy. <laughs> why is um, it why is it that there's like a weird other one that like what? Who, glows a little who is bit? who is Augustine? And and why is there this local bard guy? Why do I hear music all the time? What the fuck is this? It's weird, after Panda and I's talk in the midstream, or the, like, stream gap, I just have Celestial by Ed Sheeran on now. <laughs> <laughs> you have Celestial what? Celestial by Ed Sheeran. Okay. You know, the oh. song that would get you copyright strike for a streaming Scarlet and Violet? Oh, no. Oh, yeah. no. Who is this Edward Sheeran? It's Edward Sheeran. Must be some kind of devil. Put me in here. Must be. <laughs> but no, I know the... I know the best, and I say the best, is I, I don't feel too much towards him right now. Um, he did send you here. He wasn't lying. Yeah. But it's not like this is something Arendelle hasn't wanted. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, map in, map in tow, notes noted down. Um, is there any kind of other relevant equipment in the hearth? I mean, nothing usable. A couple of rusted daggers stab some notes under the wall while others are normal and use a fucking nail. Um, but other than that, not much of use seems to be in the hearth. In the corner, there is a small uh, barrel, which if you were to look inside, houses some bread. It's a wonder how it stays non-moldy, but seemingly it's edible. Hmm. He's got rations. He's going to just, uh, I guess, step outside. As you pull your hand toward the door, and turn the knob. Someone or something bumps into it and knocks you over. And before you get a chance to see who it is, that's where we're going to end session. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey, so random thing. I'm gonna need you tomorrow. Anyways, me gotcha. So true. Um, do you have any? Do you have anything you want to say? This is your solo session. Do you have anything you want to say before we? Uh, before I rate us out? Well, I did kind of monologue while you were gone. But, okay, um, okay. The synopsis of that just kind of was: he is anxious, a little nervous, apprehensive, but so ready to learn. Okay, okay. Uh, who is live that I could fuck? Who is live that I could raid? Um, uh, ooh, you know. Do you have someone? <sighs> yeah, so there's this one guy I like to watch sometimes. Uh, Zombite okay, Hida, okay. I think his no, name is. No, I can't raid myself. <laughs> Oh my god. Uh, View a duplication actually, glitch. Number. Actually, it's Raikou. It's actually Raikou. Do you search up Raikou? Raikou. Okay, no! Stop it with this fuck ass cat! Fine, we're going to the duck account. You don't get to decide anymore. We're going to, we're going to the duck account in a fucking bit. I, for all of you that don't know, they've been fucking terrorizing me with this stupid Raikou image, and they keep, like, posting it in my fucking DMs and in my Discord channels. I'm going to explode. Anyways, have fun with the duck account. Bye bye!